Hello, this is Lucian Miller from Innovative Designs, and in this video we're going to show you how to change out the bearings in a Scorpion airplane motor. Uh, the motor that we're going to be using in this video is one of the, one of the new S2 3020 uh, 780 kV motors. Uh, this particular motor uh, bearings are feeling a little gritty in it, so we're going to go ahead and put some new bearings in it to uh, make it run smooth again. Now, Pretty much the only tools that you need for changing out the bearings is an Allen wrench. Uh, I like using one of these screwdriver style with the replaceable tips, so you can you got the whole you got the whole kit here, and you can you know use whatever size tip you need to do the job. We've got our new bearings right here that we're going to put in the motor, and the other important tool that you're going to need when changing out bearings is an arbor press. Uh, you can also use a drill press, uh, but you need something that you can push down. Uh, to remove the bearings from the motor. So, first thing you need to do to uh, take the motor apart is remove the set screws in the little retaining collar on the back of the motor. So we'll just loosen those up using our Allen wrench. You don't have to take them all the way out, just get them loose. And then we'll set that retaining collar aside. Uh, next thing we're going to want to do is pull the motor apart. Now, with all brushless motors, you've got the rotating part and you've also got the fixed motor mount part. Um, you just grab hold of each of these two parts and pull. Now one thing to remember, the magnets in these motors are very, very strong. And you don't ever want to let the parts slam together because if you do, it can damage the bearings. Or if you get your thumb or your finger in the way, it can put a nasty uh, pinch or a, you know, get, get you a blood blister on your finger and you don't want that to happen. So make sure you grab the parts firmly, pull them apart. And now we've got the motor separated. We have the rotating part of the motor, which contains the shaft and the magnets, which we'll set aside for now. And we also have the rotor, and the rotor assembly contains, uh, or excuse me, the stator assembly contains the stator and the two bearings. And uh, so next we'll show you how to take those bearings out. The next step in the process is to actually push the bearings out. Um, now the, the inner race of the bearing overhangs the center hole of the motor slightly and so to get that out uh, what I like to use is a, a shaft that's one size smaller than the, the actual bearing. This motor has a five millimeter shaft so I'm going to use a four millimeter shaft. This is actually uh, an old shaft out of an HK2221 motor as my bearing tool. Um, so first thing we're going to do is line the motor up in the arbor press and then what I'm going to do is slide this shaft down in here and kind of tip it at a slight angle so it catches on the edge of that bearing. Then I'm going to use the arbor press to push it down on the bearing and that pops it right out. Uh, sometimes you have to push a little harder, sometimes they come out pretty easy, just depends on the tolerances of the motor. Now to get the inner bearings out, I'm going to use a little bigger tool and uh, the center hole in these motors is about six millimeters and sometimes a six millimeter shaft will fit, this one won't, and sometimes it's a little bit smaller. Uh, what I've got here is a five millimeter Allen wrench that I cut off because if you measure it from tip to tip it's about 5.8 millimeters and that's a nice tool to get down in there and I can push against that uh, inner bearing. Now you'll notice when we go to press on this end of the motor we actually have the winding wires of the motor exposed here. Now we can't just put that right down on the plate and press because you'll crush these wires and cause shorts. So what I'm going to use is a small block of flexible rubber. Uh, this is a, an auto body squeegee that's used for when you're doing paint work on cars um, and it's about a, three sixteenths inch thick and two, like the size of a business card and I've drilled a couple of holes in it and the reason I've done that is so I've got room for the bearing to fall through the hole when I put it in place and so I'm just going to rotate my arbor press to a flat spot on the plate here and set my rubber piece. Now if you don't have a piece of rubber you can also use a piece of hard balsa wood or something like that. The idea here is you want to distribute the stress on these wires to the whole surface 
of the wires and not just the highest wire that's on here because if you do press on that you'll crush that wire and you can introduce a short into the motor. So let's bring the anvil of the press up and we'll align this so it's centered on that hole and bring this down. Now on the arbor presses, you know, sometimes it's not at the right angle. You can rotate the handle to get it at the angle that you want. Now once I have this all set up, I'm just going to apply gentle pressure uh, until the, the bearings press free like that. And as you can see there, we've, we've pulled the two bearings out of the motor and we've got the pocket in the end of each end of the motor where we've removed the bearings. So, and you also see here the windings are still real nice. We haven't scratched any of those or anything because we use the rubber block to protect them. So, now that we got the bearings out, uh, next we'll show you how to put the new bearings in. Okay, now we've got the, uh, the bearings out of the motor and uh, we're going to show you how to put the new ones in place. Now, uh, typically what I like to do is take a Q-tip before we put the new bearings in and clean the bearing races out to make sure there's no grease or dirt or sand or anything in there. Uh, just a nice little precaution. You can run it up and down the bearing tube because if your motor's been run a while, a lot of times you'll have some grease and oil and dirt down in there. You can see a little bit of dirt coming off on this one here. Now that we've uh, we've got it clean and ready to go, we're going to put our new bearings in. Now, um, if you want to, at, at this point in time, you can uh, pre-lubricate your bearings uh, with the, uh, the Scorpion Motor Bearing Lubricant. This is a great little kit that we offer on our website. Uh, and uh, this particular oil is not only a lubricant, but it's also a corrosion inhibitor and a moisture displacer. So if you fly, you know, in areas where it's damp, you know, like you're in Florida or Louisiana or something like that, and you're, you're in a climate where it's humid and damp a lot, uh, not only does this product lubricate your bearings, but it also uh, helps them to not, you know, rust from humidity and other things like that. Uh, the, the bottle comes with a protective cap on it, and then you have two different lengths of uh, needles, that, uh, needle point applicators. You just screw the applicator onto the bottle, pull the cap off, and we're ready to go with the, uh, with the motor uh, bearing lubricant. Now, what I like to do is use a, a spare piece of shaft material the same size as the motor shaft for the particular motor as an alignment tool when I'm putting the bearings in, and this works really well to make sure that when the bearings are pressed in, they don't tip you know, one way or the other and uh, get misaligned. So what I'll do here, um, I'm going to slide the bearings onto this little, this little shaft piece here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of the bearing lubricant down in the bearing and spin that bearing a few times to distribute it down inside the bearing. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on the other side before I put the other bearing in place. That way you get a little bit of lubricant in between the two. And then put a little bit on this side here. And then you can spin the bearings, work it in real well. Now, in the, uh, the this is an uh, earlier style motor that uses two bearings stacked on top of each other. Some of the newer style motors have got a single bearing at each end. So uh, if that's the case, then you would just have one bearing at this end. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that into the motor and just get it just lightly started. Then I'm going to take the other bearing and we'll go ahead and put a little lubrication in it. Slide it down on the shaft. Spin it a few times and then put a little bit more bearing lube around it. And then you can take that shaft and you can spin that shaft and that distributes the, uh, the bearing lubricant down in there. Okay, here's a little close-up shot. You can see how we've got the little shaft in there. We've got the one bearing, uh, the outer bearing, and it's about a third of the way into the motor right now. And then we've got the other two bearings at this end. Now, typically, I like to press uh, the bearings, the inner bearings in first because I have the nice flat spot to rest the motor on. And when you push the bearings in, you always want to push them from the outer edge or the outer race of the bearing. You never want to push on the inside edge because that'll damage the bearing. 
What I like to use is a small uh, quarter inch socket set as a series of bearing press tools and the idea is to find a, a, uh, a socket that's about the same diameter as the outside diameter of your bearing and because of the fact that it, it's got that hole missing out of the middle you only press from the outer edge of the bearing to make sure it's done properly. Now to, uh, to do this we're going to set the motor in the uh, arbor press with the shaft centered under the uh, anvil here and then we'll set the socket in place like that so it's nice and straight and we want to make sure we're centered well and then uh, sometimes it helps if you hold the socket so it doesn't slide and then we're just going to apply nice slow steady pressure and we're just going to seat those bearings down into the motor like that now uh, to do the other side we're just going to flip the motor over we're going to use our, our rubber uh, block here to protect the windings so that we're not pushing too hard down onto the, uh, the wires and cause a short. And once we do that, uh, since this is a bigger bearing, we're going to need a bigger, a bigger socket. Uh, try and, that's a good size right there. And then we'll just lightly press this one down until it seats in the motor. And there we have it. Now, this, uh, this uh, shaft here, we can, uh, we can push down on that to get it out of the motor. Uh, and pull it right on out. Sometimes they're a little bit stiff and we can just press it through with the uh, piece of material we need to take the bearings off. And so now we've got the new bearings installed in the motor and we're uh, ready to put the motor back together now. Uh, take our rotating part of the motor here line it up in the new bearing and when you go to put these two parts back together remember that the magnetic attraction is very strong between these two parts and so you want to slide them together slowly I like to grab the stator up here near the top so that you can control it going together you never want to let it slam together because that will damage the inner race of these inner bearings in here once you've got the two parts together now all you got to do is put the retaining collar back on now um, one of the things that Scorpion has started doing lately is putting these little compression wave washers on the motors, uh, both in the helicopter motors and the airplane motors. What these do is they put a small amount of preload tension on the bearings, which makes them run quieter and smoother. And it also allows for the heat expansion of the motor. Uh, when, the, when the motor runs up to temperature, that center bearing tube is going to grow in length slightly, and it's going to pull on the on the shaft and this wave washer allows for a tiny bit of movement in the motor without pinching the bearings. So we're going to put the uh, collet on. Remember you always want to line one of the set screws up with the flat spot on the shaft. We're going to push that down until it just touches that wave washer and then just compress it slightly so it uh, has a little bit of tension on it. We're going to tighten up the first set screw and then we're going to come back now, if you set this over the edge of a table like this, you can get some good force on there to make sure you don't slip with your tool and hit yourself in the hand. So we're going to tighten up that set screw, and then we're going to rotate it around to line up the other one, and then make sure that one's good and tight. And so there we have it. We've got the motor all back together. It runs nice and smooth now. We've got the new bearings in it, and uh, we're ready to put this motor back into service. Well, that completes our video on how to change a set of bearings in a Scorpion airplane motor. Hopefully you found this helpful. Uh, be sure to check out all the videos we have on uh, changing shafts, bearings, soldering techniques, and other things like that on our website at www.innovativedesigns.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.